Hey, welcome to Story Lab. Uh, one sec. Uh, this week we're talking about creativity. Uh, one sec. Uh, plus, we'll learn about a creative project thousands years old that people are still talking about. Let's go. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. And today, we're talking about creativity. Which is using your imagination to do something new. Uh, Zeke? Yeah? What's with all the yarn? Oh, it's not yarn. It's lasers. Sure looks like yarn. Well, it is, but it's way more fun to say lasers. So what's up with the lasers? Sorry. What's up with the laser? Well, you have your end of the summer party coming up. Yeah. So I thought this would be a creative way to decorate. Ah, well, it is creative. Success. But also a little messy. Oh. Do you have any other creative decoration ideas? I'm so glad you asked. Yes, I do. We just need scissors. Here we go. All right. Oh, they're ah. everywhere. Oh, watch out. Yep. <laughs> Did you make it? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I'm surrounded. Well, try to get out. Watch out. Oh, oh, oh. Go under? <laughs> okay. Scissors. Let's make it. Get all no, of no, the lasers. No. That was mine. That was mine. That was mine. No, this was mine down here. I got this one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, back here. That's it. Um, Zeke, what exactly are we making? Well, it requires balloons. Check. A bowl of glue. Check. And a bunch of pieces of yarn or string, roughly three to four feet long. Check. Check. Make sure you're working where it's okay to get a little messy because, ah, uh, well, you'll see. Oh boy. So first, blow up the balloons. Thank you. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that size works great. Good, because I'm out of breath. Next, place your yarn or string into a bowl right here and pour in the glue. Now it helps to mix in a little bit of water into the glue first. Make sure it's wet, but not super duper drippy. Okay, hold this. All right, here we go. Would you mind doing mine? Yes, sir. There we go. Now the fun part, wrapping your balloon. Where in the world is this going? Now you can use all the same color yarn or mix it up with different colors, but make sure you cover the balloon really well. The glue kind of helps it stick to the balloon to make it a little bit easier. Oh, this is fun. And just keep wrapping until you're content with it or it covers the whole balloon. Zeke, are you seeing this? <laughs> I'll wait till it dries. Alrighty. Now keep in mind the glue should help it stick to the outside of the balloon. It's so slimy. Yeah. Now when you're done, just hang up your balloon to let the glue dry. And then? And then comes the really, really cool part. Once your, all your gluey yarn is dry, pop the balloon. Whoa! Then remove it. And now you've got a really creative decoration. These will look awesome for my party. Speaking of creative and awesome, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the second book of the Bible. Exodus tells of God's faithfulness to his people. In the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. 
God had a plan to restore people to relationship by demonstrating love to the whole world through one family, the Israelites. But the Israelites had been enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years. The people cried out for help and God sent Moses to lead them out of Egypt to freedom in the desert. There, God led them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Greetings citizens, Brian here. God had led the Israelites to freedom, but now they found themselves in the desert, a place very famous for having no Starbucks or McDonald's or any food or drink of any kind. Yet God provided both water and food. But God wanted to do more than that. He wanted to live among them. So God called Moses to come up to the top of Mount Sinai. There God gave Moses many instructions, including the plans for building a tabernacle. Now, yeah, that's a funny word, tabernacle. It was a tent, but not like the kind of tent you just pop up in the backyard. This tent God told Moses to build would be beautiful and highly decorated, a holy tent, a place where God would dwell. Let's see, um, curtains, lampstand, bowls, altars, incense, robes. God's instructions for the tabernacle were very specific because every detail mattered. Moses gave the people this amazing news about the tabernacle. Yeah! Oh, yeah! But while everyone would have a chance to help, God knew that it would take somebody really special to lead the work. We need a skilled craftsman to head up the whole project. <clears throat> Bezalel, son of Uri? Up uh, over here. God has chosen you to lead everyone crafting the holy tent. Who? Me? God has filled you with his spirit, with wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and all kinds of skill. God had given Bezalel an amazing ability to make beautiful patterns in precious metals, to cut and set gemstones and to work with wood. But God knew Bezalel would need help. Aholiab, God has also chosen you and given you special skill in all kinds of crafts. And to top it off, God has given both of you the ability to teach others everything you know. We are so on it. Then God chose Moses' brother Aaron and his family to serve as priests. And the rest of the people were so excited to help that they gave whatever they had for the building of the holy tent. Gold, silver, bronze, yarn, leather, wood. The people gladly brought it to Bezalel and Aholiab. We get to help! We're doing it a pickaxe! At last, every robe had been stitched, every lampstand molded, and every post carved. The tabernacle was finished. You have done the work just as God commanded. May God bless you all! When everything was finally in place and the priests were ready, a cloud covered the tent, and the glory of God filled it for everyone to see. The end. Hmm. You know, creativity sure looks different for everyone. And, like, hard work, too. You got that right. In fact, it probably took around nine months to construct the tabernacle from start to finish. But God provided everything they needed. Hey, you're right. It's like God invited the Israelites to partner with him. Bingo. So what's our part in the story? Well, creativity is using your imagination to do something new, right? And sometimes that something new isn't just a craft project. Sometimes... Your work of art is simply serving others. Like making a card for someone who's sick, or cleaning up your room without being asked, or... Or like the way Zeke used his imagination to create decorations for my party. Yeah, but I kind of messed that up, didn't I? The whole lasers thing. You didn't mess anything up, Zeke. You just found a better way. He's right. Using your imagination to love God and love others better is one of the best things you can do because that's when a work of art becomes a work of the heart. Huh? What? Huh? Not bad, partner. The tabernacle truly was an amazing work of art and heart, where the Israelites would worship God. Later, they would gather to worship God in a temple. Even Jesus came there. Now we can gather to worship God in a church, but through the Holy Spirit, Jesus is always with us no matter where we are. So we can use our creativity to worship God anywhere. I think you've got it. See you next time. 
So, here's the thing. Use your imagination to honor God. You know, I'm glad you changed your mind about the lasers. I think you mean laser. Yeah, laser. 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 Thanks for joining us in the oh, story, story lab. Oh, that, see, see you see next time. time. Oh, 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 oh. Why are you so everywhere? Many? Oh, this was a bad idea. They're a very, very bad idea. Uh, watch out, watch out. Uh,